Hey guys, uh, I'm out in the garage today working on a couple projects and one of the things I wanted to do was a quick review. I bought a uh, newer uh, gimbal head for shooting birds. I do uh, a lot of stuff with woodpeckers in the trees and uh, a gimbal would be nice to go up and down. So I thought for $65 on Amazon I'd give this a try. And I'm going to show you guys some of the quirks and problems that I found with it. Uh, for $65, are they really problems? I don't know, but we'll see if we can fix them and make this uh, quite a bit better. Okay, so the first problem I found is I wanted to use this uh, head on an older um, Velbon Sherpa 200 tripod, which has a quarter inch uh, screw on it. So they give you this adapter, the 3 8 adapter, in with the newer, and uh, there's a problem with it. It has a head on it that uh, does not sink into the end uh, of the tripod head here. So I'll, I'll mount that and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So everything, all the weight and everything is going to be spinning on this top little head. So I'll show you how that looks and the problem with that. And there's a problem when you mount it in. Uh, everything is going to be sitting on this little uh, two millimeter lip, which uh, this whole base should be flush on your, your tripod. Um, then it's going to distribute the weight evenly and uh, so the solution for that is for me I'm going to switch over here and I'm going to use uh, this Velbon Geo tripod which has, uh, it's my carbon fiber it has the 3 8 and then all the weight will be distributed on this whole head here instead of just on that little quarter inch uh, circle I'm not sure why they did that um, it doesn't make any sense the other option is you guys could try to order um, the inserts uh, the 3 8 to 1 quarter insert that would uh, sink in flush uh, inside here and then you would mount and that's the way it should be it should sink right in and then you're mounting it um, flush so that's that's one deficiency I found so I'm gonna go ahead and take that out we're gonna mount it on the other tripod and then I'll show you guys uh, what the next problem is okay so here we've got it mounted on the uh, geo and you can see it's uh, it spins nice and freely uh, your arm swings up and down for adjustment nice and easily. Um, I just wanted to show you guys there is a little compass here on top that spins around. Uh, it's telling me north is that way right now. That's completely wrong. North is that way. So um, not too useful. And for some strange reason on the end of your uh, Arca Swiss plate here they've mounted a um, bubble level. But uh, you could never level that when this is vertical. You would have to turn the head this way in order to level that. So I'm not sure why this is on there. It's 100% completely useless. So again, just trivial little thing. But anyway, what I want to show you the problem with this is to have it spin freely like this, uh, there's a lot of slop in here. In here, it's very up and down. It's not smooth and not to my liking at all. So what we're gonna do is pop this cap off of here and get to our, our tightener inside, which I've already done once before. And I'll tell you guys, if you were just to pop that off and take your screwdriver, um, you know, flip this out of the way so we can work and, and give that a little quarter turn to tighten that up to take that slop out of there, then this binds on the tripod. So we're gonna have to take it apart and put some grease in there or take a look at it. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do and one Take second. a flathead screwdriver and just pop this right off. So we, we pop it off. You can see there's a little bit of uh, residue where they had the glue on there that does absolutely nothing to hold that on. And there's uh, what we have inside. So it's just uh, this one washer that's holding down the whole assembly and you put pressure on there. And so it's either wobbly and loose or it's tight. There's no in-between adjustment. There's no bushing. There should be a plastic bushing or something in there or uh, maybe a spring. If you could put a little uh, pressure spring in there to give this some play that when we tighten this down there's a little degree of pressure that gets added so you have some control. It's the same thing with this swing arm up here. We're gonna have to adjust it as well because it's either swinging or you give it a you know just a, the teeniest little turn and it's 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 stuck. There is no more swing. There's no play to this. It's either on or off. So you just need your uh, torque end here. And we're gonna loosen this off. And we're gonna pull this washer out. 
And that's all it is, is a washer sitting on here and there's a, there's actually a little bit of space in between. So we just work that until it comes off. And so what you should have is a grease on here to make this spin smoothly on here. And uh, I can see little bits of, um, it looks like this hard black material kind of gumming up the works in there. So the first thing you're going to want to do is clean that all off and I'm going to put on a little uh, a little bit of um, bearing grease is what I'm going to use. It's a little thicker maybe. I don't care if it's... Uh, I'm just going to put a very light, light coating on there. I just want something a little thicker to take up, help take up some of that slop. So I'm just wiping all of this off. It's all, uh, should be uh, in here too. You should have a little coating. Anything that's going to touch metal on metal and spin. I'm just going to completely wipe this off. There is a very fine sheet of plastic in here actually. Right on this bottom level. It's spinning on a very very fine sheet of plastic. I didn't notice that before. So in order to get this lifted up here I've grabbed my X-Acto. I'm just going to work the edge here without folding or scratching anything. There we go. I didn't see that in there the first time I took this apart. So I'm just going to give this a clean off and the same thing underneath there and then we're going to apply a new little sheet of grease. Okay, so I've gone ahead and uh, put a tiny little bit of bearing grease on here and we're just going to work that around. Just want a very fine coating. Anything that's going to touch metal on metal. I'm also just going to put a little fine uh, run right across here. And inside. And inside there. And we're going to slate that back on. And then we're going to see what we can do to take out this play in here. I'm thinking I'm going to put in a plastic uh, bushing. Okay, now that we've got uh, this all lubed on the inside, time to put the back, the top back on. And what we're going to do, drop in our washer, put in our plastic bushing on top. Which, uh, the problem is that before, this screw would free wheel and then when you tightened it down to take the play out of here um, and you turned it too much uh, it would it would tighten up very quickly and then this metal would catch on this metal here so when you back spun it would actually turn this washer out and loosen it and then you've got play in here again so let's see what happens when we tighten this down enough to take the play out of it see this just tightened up right here let's see so it's still spinning, it's a little tight actually. So now it's spinning freely. And there is no play in there. That's exactly what's needed. Uh, a plastic, no play in there at all now. I loosen it off just a little hair more. Completely freewheeling now. If you do that, there's a half a millimeter of play there, so that's where I want it right there. I think it's going to freewheel. 
and there's zero play there. So that's your solution right there, guys. So you need to add that in there after you've greased all this apart. I would take this apart because, like I said, I was finding pieces of this black material in inside there, and that's going to stop it from uh, moving completely smoothly and freely. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys, if we take this arm apart up here, what we've got inside. Okay, so we've got a bearing mount here, and then we've got a washer. And you can see uh, that it's like a lithium grease they've got on there. If we pull the back side of this out, it's all lubed around here. There's a plastic bushing right here. And right against here is another flat uh, plastic piece that uh, everything's gliding on. So it looks fairly well lubed with nice light stuff. So I'm going to leave that all in there. I don't want to mess with that. What I do want to do is add another washer on the inside here. Yeah, okay, I got one right here. So I'm going to add this washer is going to go on the inside. And between these two washers, I want to put a compression spring, just a little piece of compression spring, so that it adds a bit of tension when you're tightening this up. So that you don't go from freewheeling completely to uh, lock down within an eighth of a turn. This should give you a little bit more. It's going to add a little bit of pressure at a time instead of going from full off to full on. So that's going to be the fix for that. Okay, so looking around the shop, um, I actually couldn't find any compression spring. Um, nothing that I wanted to cut off of something else and use anyway. But I've got two uh, rubber bushings here. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put those on there. Just to add, uh, you know, uh, something that's movable and it's going to add a little bit of tension when you tighten this up. We'll just try this and see how it works. Okay, so we can go from loose here, completely loose, freewheeling, to a little bit of tension, a little bit more tension, a little bit more tension. And it still seems pretty smooth. And you can still tighten it right okay, down. The next thing I want to show you guys is the Arca Swiss plate um, knockoff that it comes with. Uh, you can use the real plates. Apparently I did a little looking online. Um, this plate is the short uh, plate. And uh, the only problem I have with this is the cheap mounting ring that comes on the back. It's pretty much useless. I'm using uh, an A99 and uh, a 7400 lens and you cannot tighten it uh, down enough with that little cheap ring. So the solution is just keep a <clears throat> quarter or a washer or something in your bag that you can really crank that down and get a good tight uh, lock on your lens when you use that. Okay so I've gone ahead and attached the plate to the bottom of the lens. and. Uh, I'm going to mount it on here and I find where it works the best is when I put the mounting plate right at the front lined up with the uh, mount tighten it down and I've already got this set you can there's another uh, screw on the front here you can adjust this up or down depending on your lens I find mine works really nice at three and because this is a zoom lens uh, to find your balance point you're going to have to zoom the lens out to where you're going to use it so I, I put it out somewhere in the 300 to 400 range just to get a good feel. And um, I know that that's where my camera balances. You let go and it holds position. People have complained and rightfully so that this kind of gets in the way. Um, being, you know, you're controlling the camera with your right hand moving and you want to, lots of times I'm in manual uh, focus and this is right in the way and very awkward. So. Uh, the first couple times I used this, uh, what I did was I actually just mounted it around the other way, like this. 
I thought to myself, why didn't I do that before? And like I said, for me, now you can see it, to balance this lens and camera combination, putting the plate right at the front here, lining them up, is uh, where it gets the best balance for me. And now that I've switched that around, um, yes, I have to let go of the camera here to make an adjustment if I want to lock it down, but I can now do my focusing and my zooming. And you have to remember when you do that that you're actually going the opposite way to tighten. You're rolling away from you instead of towards you. So in conclusion, um, you know, if you, this is something you want to purchase out of the box and use, uh, you're probably not going to be happy with it. There's a lot of slop, a lot of play. It is a good price at $65 American. Um, but uh, if you're a handy guy, 15 minutes uh, and you can do the changes that I did. Very simple, adding some grease, doing a bit of a cleanup, putting in a nylon bushing, putting in uh, a rubber spacer at the top or a piece of compression spring. 15 minute job and this feels a hundred times more responsive. Uh, no slop, no play. And uh, all in all, I would give it a thumbs up. It's a good product if you want to spend a little bit of time to tighten things up.